Welcome back to the centre court here at the Stella Artois. Murray just uh, ready to go. Thomas Johansson this time making his younger man wait. <laughs> and I agree with the boys in the studio. Essential for Murray to get off to a good start here this afternoon. It was a slightly nervous opening service hold against Taylor Dent yesterday. Served a couple of double faults, but once he'd held and got an early First break set. on the board, it was just one-way traffic. Andrew Murray to sir. Not sure the same thing will happen today. We'll Murray. find out. Murray to begin. That's a confident start from Johansson. Love 15. Certainly one thing John Murray won't be able to do today will, we, will be to put any sort of nothing balls in the middle of the court. No, he'll get uh, chewed up if he does that. Johansson, particularly on the backhand side, very, very strong. <laughs> That's what we, the sort of shots he's going to have to start hitting if he's going to mix in with the big boys regularly when he gets a chance to dominate early part of a rally he's got to hit that first strike and go for it Fifteen thirty. Well, again, the disguise with the drop from Johansson. 15, 14. That's a lovely shot, just shortens a swing right at the last minute. Perfect disguise. Murray's going to have to obviously be aware of that shot. He'll have to stay as close to the baseline as he can. Good heavy slice. Ball stayed very low. Yeah. First ace for Murray. Out wide at 137 miles per hour. And that's an area I think that everybody agrees will continue to grow. Still just 18 years of age. Plenty more strength to be put on the frame. This, this passing shot here from Murray, those are the type of shots he was hitting against Taylor Dent, but Taylor Dent not moving anywhere near as quickly as Johansson. And those were winners yesterday. And Johansson, you're gonna have to he's gonna have to hit a lot of very good passing shots to get past him. He's very quick at the net. Impressive. 
And there's the, the Hewitt like come on the clenched yeah. fist after an important winner. He's not afraid to let the more experienced players know that he wants to take them on. Three break points saved in this opening service game for Murray. Just a wonderful point from Murray. Really waited till he got that chance to really put some extra juice on that forehand and stepped in and clocked it away there cross court. Wonderful. Yeah, what an impressive hold from Mandy Murray. Three break points saved. And takes uh, an early lead in this first set. He has the, I suppose as well, John, the, this on his side, that he has the surprise factor. Nobody really knows on tour how this young man plays. It's not like Thomas Johansson in the locker rooms could have gone up to, uh, I don't know, one of his fellow professionals and said, you've played him, what does he play like? <laughs> exactly. Well, and uh, quantity. Exactly. With a rookie, a rookie year is sometimes <laughs> one of, the, one of the, the best out there because when you come out there, as you say, no one knows how you play. After that first year, Everybody knows how you play, and then, mm. it, then it becomes a big step <laughs> tougher. Yeah, that's when the real test comes in, when everybody knows how you play. Can you then back it up? Can you do you have the versatility to change your game style? Slightly overcast here at Queen's Club, but no rain in the air, thankfully. Christina. During Johansson's run to the Australian Open title back in 2002, he was given the nickname Thomas No Name Johansson because nobody really knew who he was or had heard of him before. They certainly knew exactly who he was at the end of the championship. Awesome. more comfortable opening service hold for Johansson. Handled adversity so well yesterday as well that Andy Murray against Taylor Dent took the first set was 2 all 15-40 in the second set and just brushed those aside and that really was where the match was for Murray yesterday. already see just the beginning of this match how much harder Murray is hitting his ground strokes from the back of the court against Dent he was almost daring him to come in against him Tell you what, if that had gone over, that was another clean winner. <laughs> the disguise has been fabulous on that forehand side on the drop shot so far from Johansson.
โอ้สลับเก่งมากเลยมาริลีทุกเกมทุกวัน So Murray answering Johansson's love service game with one of his own, and the young Scot has settled down very nicely here on centre court. Playing a man today in Thomas Johansson that has a wealth of experience at 30 years of age. He's seeded six here this year at Queens Club, five foot eleven, eight titles to his credit. Johansson, two of them on grass back in 2001 at Haller and at Nottingham. Best at Queen's Club performance. Uh, second round back in 1996, so he's uh, gone past that now. And the fourth round at Wimbledon twice. Currently 20 in the world, Johansson has been as uh, high as uh, number seven back in June of 2002. That was the year he won the Australian Open and suffered from the expectations, I think, more than anything, that he put on himself after that Grand Slam win, John. Absolutely. It, he's never been the same player since then. And, but he's sort of settled back. If you look at his rankings over the years, he's always been a very solid top 50 player. And, and he's one of these players that you look at with his game, but there's not really much that can go wrong. Mm. He's one of those players that you have to always beat. He never puts in a, what you call a really bad performance. He's, and and he, it's just a question of how, how far he can go. You know, he doesn't have huge weapons in his game, but one of those ones you've got to grind him out to beat him. And that's the test for Murray today. And it's done incredibly well you had to get back to number 20 in the world missed uh, the entire 2003 season with a knee injury with doubts whether he'd be, ever be able to play again Ooh, Ooh, close. Close. <laughs> like Hawkeye to have a look at that one if we can Murray thought it might have clipped Let's see what technology gives us yep they thought it might have clipped as well Just the extra acceleration with this forehand just unleashes it cross court. Oh. Well, Hanson this time feeling he's been hard done by. Did look a touch wide from here. And that's the type of play John that if Murray can avoid, then he might have a, a huge success here today against Johansson. It's that return that just lands in the middle of the court. You might get away with it at junior ranks, but not when you're mixing it with the big boys. in the light blue top there looking after Andy Murray during the grass court season just didn't look any way that, that Murray could win this point from this position that point there looked like this was all over Great court awareness there to hit that shot. Must no. have felt as well that Johansson was probably in the net, so he had to go for the pass. Game Johansson. Two Well, it was the start that we were hoping for for Andy Murray. He's got into the opening set.
somebody that's uh, working with Andy as well, alongside Mark Petchy, the young lady there in a the white top, Lucy Eyre. You stroke the Olympic eight at the Sydney Olympic Games. And she's uh, just uh, finished her master's degree in physiology at Brunel. And is uh, now uh, just guiding Murray through his physical preparations during the grass court season. Yeah, Fifty. Serving well at the moment, Murray. Four double faults, 55% first serves in. shape or form as uh, Andy Murray Carrot come out here and, and be uh, overawed by facing somebody like Thomas Johansson a top 20 player and for Murray at just uh, 18 currently 357 in the world he's an uh, entry system ranking John there's no if you like mental scarring for this young man no Queen's performances here to date until this week no performances at Wimbledon there are no there are no bad experiences for him to, to draw upon if it does get tight, as and when it does get tight. No mental scarring because he is so young. Well, that's that's true. So there obviously is nothing to lose. But we've seen a lot of players in the past, a lot of British players that would freeze in this circumstance mm. with all the publicity that he's had and all the expectation of the, the British public. And you can see from the start he's had, he loves the big occasion. Right. And that's uh, that's what you want from a player coming up, that relishes the thought of being in the big arenas against the big boys that's yeah. that's what you want you we saw that when he made his davis cup debut and, and won the match uh, against israel and complete no nerves in front of five thousand people that were basically all against him and went out there and played a stunning match i'm sure there are a lot of past and present players out there that wake up in cold sweats in the middle of the night could i have taken that match point could i have done anything differently murray doesn't have that in his brain all he wants to do is just win He's making a good fight of it at the moment against Johansson. No breaks. 2 3. Left. Left. for the right ball to accelerate on. Love it, thing. Well, that was a shot where he put a little bit more air on that forehand to get himself back into the court. And then when he got the chance to hit the big strike, he did so with a lot of authority.
15 uno. That's on court number one at the moment. Greg Rizetsky has just got underway against Radek Stepanek of the Czech Republic. And Stepanek, with the better of the early stages, three love up in the first set against Britain's number two. Just long. Must have felt when it left his racket that it was going to land on the baseline. You can see the disappointment. Hawkeye confirms. Game Johansson. Three games off. There's Jamie Murray there in the right in the middle of the picture in the white hat to the right hand side of the picture. That's uh, Andy's younger brother. Very good return to serve here. The rule of thumb there. Unsure at all. You hit those. That one floating in the air. Easy put away. Johansson thought that second serve was long. It did look long. Johansson just checking the ball to see if there's any chalk on it, and there probably was. Started playing tennis at the age of three, Andy Murray with his uh, mother Judy, who we have heard from earlier. Now down at the Sanchez Casal Academy. The last two years, learning his trade there. That, the advantage of that is that he's been able to hit with the likes of Guillermo Correa, Carlos Moya, get some experience against playing against them, and has taken the odd set or two off them as well on a clay court. The other advantage, obviously, from a British point of view, Davis Cup. You know, we have a player, 14, Andy Murray, that actually prefers clay and hard courts almost to grass. Well, certainly at the moment, he's learning his learned his trade on clay courts, and it'd be good to have him in, in the camp on these away matches that we sometimes get on clay. Yeah, Murray. Four change, please. You will. Murray leads. Four games to three. I'm sure that a lot of people that woke up this morning over their breakfast and were reading the papers and saw uh, Andy Murray with a huge grimace on his face, fist clenched on the, the back of their papers. 
and who is this man? You know, is this a, a false dawn for British tennis? I think if you read those and then those papers and then sitting watching here on Centre Court, you'll realise that this man is the real deal. This this young boy really is the real McCoy. And yes, we shouldn't get too overexcited, but when he's leading Thomas Johansson 4-3 in the first set, Johansson top 20 in the world. Well, we are going to get overexcited <laughs> about because that's the nature of the beast in Britain. <laughs> and with Wimbledon coming up, you know, you could just imagine right now newspaper editors are going to be, you know, all over him getting stories. And of course, he will be immediately thought of as being the sort of the next uh, Tim Henman and everything else. But and I think he could be. I mean, it, yep. it is early, and and we've certainly got another probably two to oh, three yeah. years before he he plays close to his best. Uh, he can certainly get physically stronger. There are certain aspects in his game that he will improve on. But he is an exciting prospect, no question about it. We do tend to go overboard here. What can you do? He knows that, and he's prepared for it. Winner of this match, ironically, could face Tim Hemman in the next round. Hemman and Guccione to follow this one. Winner of that one will face the winner of this one. Take that. Could you imagine the feeding frenzy that we'd have here at Queen's <laughs> if it was Hemman against Murray? Like a pack of piranhas. <laughs> Thirty fifteen. Greg Wazetsky now four one down out on court one against Radek Stepanek. Just the one break of serve. See, that's the sort of point I, I love to see with Murray. I think we no, watched him a lot in the French uh, juniors last week. Okay, it's on clay, but there was a lot of times when those type of approach shots, he wasn't really aggressive with them, and a lot of times didn't even follow into the net. He is doing so here. Just ripped this two-hander across the front of the oncoming Johansson. And what a point this could be. Murray's Very first simple. break point against the Johansson serve, and he took his chances so well yesterday against Taylor Dent. Johansson taking a long time here. There's the experience, I suppose, that the boys were talking about in the studio, Pete and Andy. Murray just complaining about his socks. <laughs> That's the only thing he's got to worry about. He's looking good. Well, Murray feeling the shot to the baseline was long from Johansson. Let's see what technology makes of it. And it did look on the line to me. Certainly sat up like it had hit the 
the line, the baseline. Murray having a word. Sooner Alan Carr in the chair from Denmark. Game your result. Four games on. First little test for Johansson in that service game, and he passed it nicely. Now you've got to hand it to Johansson there because he, he came up with some fine serving when he was down break points and some real sort of clutch shots, big forehand, very deep. Not an easy match for him to play against someone that he would never have seen play before. Net. forehand that, that Murray hit there was the sort of the almost Love. neutral shot that, that I've sort of been talking about that he can't afford to do that shot there not much on it in the middle of the court three feet inside the baseline then you're asking for trouble Johansson himself can at times get a little bit tight in matches. Seen him get very close to the finish line before and uh, not be able to push through. Fifteen, fourteen. And a couple of loose plays from Murray. And he's dug himself in a bit of a hole here. Faced two, three break points in his opening service game in this set. He's got another two to face here. That's a shame. Rather Your gave away that break, has to be said, to Andy Murray. And Johansson with a 5-4 lead, and he'll serve for the opening set. So Andy Murray here after such a bright start, rather donating that service break, the first break of this opening set. Nerves playing a part. He says he doesn't really feel nerves, but it, it wasn't, it was a bit sloppy. Well, that sort of game you can actually I get away with in, in, in juniors and in, in future sort of satellite events. You can sometimes get away with that against this type of player. When you're up in the, with the big boys, you can't get away with a game like that. To me, just lost his focus a little bit, was a little bit sloppy with a couple of forehands. And they'll jump on you when you do that. And that's that's a learning curve.
La 15. has been so successful with a little off drop would want to, uh, that one to be taken back it was far too much no, flight on the ball Murray spotted this one with plenty of time Well, you always want to try and break back as immediately after you've been broken yourself. Murray with three chances to do just that, but again, not the best service game this time from Johansson. gets the break back exactly what he needed and we're tied at five games apiece five games all fifteen left and they join us with Murray serving his sixth ace down the tee First point of the 11th game. Murray wants the same ball. Seems to have gone off the boil here. Yeah, He's played six pretty poor points in a row. And of his experience, you would have thought he would have played a very solid game serving for the set and just handed the break back. Back to the successful drop shots he hit in the first couple of games where it looked like that was going to be a, a shot that was going to really win him a lot of big points. And then uh, two or three times in a row he's got caught on it, but is he, he did doing a good it because stuff. he thinks that Murray is too far from the base? I like think so, back. yes. Looks like it. Point. Overall from the chair. 
Soon at Alan Cart, first time he's really got involved. Poor guy, well, tight call. Second double for Murray and the first serve percentage is slowly going down now at 44% and that's one of the reasons why Johansson is being able to get into the service games. Break point. Say it again because I think it's worth pointing out. Thomas Johansson can get tight for some unknown reason. I've seen it plenty of times in the past. He can just uh, choke down on the grip a fraction too hard. Advantage, Murray. So if Monty was once asked what's the best tip he could give any young golf, he says, don't grip the club too hard. Try and keep it as loose as possible in your hands. Good, all right. What a difference around about 10 minutes, mate. Murray was staring at losing the, the uh, opening set. And now he's just down with a 6 5 lead. Keep these uh, emails uh, coming in, by the way. Thank you, uh, one and all, for getting in contact with us. Uh, Rune is giving us a bit of a, a slap on the wrist here, John. Oh, for crying out loud. So Murray is 18. Nadal, Borg, Becker, all slam winners at that age. Murray is light years away. Have the guts to put him in perspective. So John Lloyd, <laughs> show us your guts. <laughs> well, I, I did say that we're not going to see the best of him for another two to three years. I'm not saying we should go overboard. He's a very good prospect. We're not talking about him winning a grand slam any day soon. We're saying he's the best British prospect we've had since Tim Hedman, and he definitely is a player, potentially. But I agree, we shouldn't go overboard. We're trying to keep it in perspective, but he is exciting. But Rune, sorry about that if we uh, went a bit overboard in your in your uh, eyes. Not too many people, I think you have to remember, not too many people Try win it. slams as teenagers. They're a rare commodity. Michael Chang's another one that you could put in that bracket. So having served for the opening set, Thomas Johansson, he'll now serve to stay in it. Well, he has that amazing ability, Murray, of just looking like no, he's not, he's never rushed. Even on a shot like this, he seems to have such good technique, sees the ball so early directs that ball so well with the two hands. Fifteen on. Well, Murray just berating himself. Felt that he should have made that play. Sets high standards, Andy Murray, for himself.
30, just unfortunate here. Just played the wrong approach shot. You know, Hansen waiting for this. Only really had to move a couple of steps to be in perfect position to hit the forehand. Not the cleanest of hits, this one for Murray, but showing the right intentions inside the court. Oh, yes. Johansson offered Murray the chance to accelerate into the corner. Murray just lapped it up. Just see the way he just lined this one up. Yeah. Had the open court, but just that extra pace there. 90 miles an hour to hit that forehand. Make sure Johansson gets no chance to run that one down. now very close to the first set just one point it's a big play ace number six for Johansson Advantage, Johansson. Now to follow this match onto the centre court here at Queen's Club. Stay seated. Britain's number one Tim Hemman against Chris Guccione of Australia. Big serving lefty. And then Leighton Hewitt against Max Mini of Belarus to round off the day. And if we don't see that Hewitt Mini match on BBC Two, you can watch it over on BBC I. One zero, Johansson. Murray starting the tie break here and not the way you would have wanted to. Mini break right away for Johansson.
Two, one game all in the second set, out on court number one between Rosetti and Stepanek. If you have just come in, Stepanek with the first set, 6-3. Sounds quite a long way to come back from 3-0 in a tie break, but it is just the one point against the serve. Has he made a change, Johansson? I'm seeing possibly just giving Murray no pace at all in the last couple of games, just keeping a good length. Letting Murray try and up the level, up the pace. First loose point he's played for a while. Looks like he tightened up his game a little bit. He was handing all around a lot of cheap errors there for about two or three games. Five one. Johansson. Right in the corner. And Johansson really, as you said, John, has just he's just sewn up the errors, sewn up the loose points, and is playing a, a professional end to this opening set. He, he has served well today, Johansson, 72%, and that's the one area where Andrew Murray has lacked today. Earlier on when he was talking with Mark Petchew, they were talking about how he'd have to serve well today, and he, he hasn't served well. His first serve percentage is at 45%. Not getting many cheap points. Whereas Johansson is at 72. Yeah, exactly. He is serving well. Plenty of encouragement from the Queen's Club crowd. Six one. Yours. It's been rather an emphatic breaker for Thomas Johansson. Thomas Johansson, and after 54 minutes, the uh, higher ranked Seven player six. has taken the opening set 7 6. I know what people will be thinking at home right now, our oh, typical British player you know, got close but couldn't quite do it in the first set. Well, I, I, I think the problem with Murray there, and you can't get away with this at senior level, is his level dropped and a big drop. You, you know, the, the top players, OK, Johansson actually threw in a really bad game when he served for the first set. But generally speaking, they keep their... 
their sort of average relatively high, and then when they need to, they can jump it up when the, you know when it gets down to the crunch. Murray there, when he got close towards the end, his level actually dropped and started making a lot of unforced errors. You can get away with that at a certain level. You can't get away with it at this level. And again, that's just playing more matches at this type of league. He'll get to know that you can't play that amount of sloppy points in a row. You can't throw them together in sort of bunches. You get away with an occasional one. But, you know, the tiebreaker was really sloppy and, and you just can't afford to do that at this level. Well, his experience at this level is, is, is minuscule. I mean, this is only his second tour event. Played his first tour event in Barcelona, was given a wild card, lost in the opening round to Jan Hernik in three sets. Time. So it doesn't look overly gloomy, I don't think, for Andy Murray. It was a pretty competitive first set. And just really the, the, the man with the greater experience took it. Second set. Johannes Huntelson. Let's hope there's more to come. Let's hope this second set is as hotly contested as the first. A few people just are slow to take up their seats. Reminder, Tim Hemman will be up next Please against Chris Guccione. Plenty more world-class tennis uh, coming your way here on the BBC. Of course, Eastbourne next week, then we... The big W. The only place to see that is with us. Love 15. I mean, the important thing to, to see is that we're talking about a high-ranked player here, and Andrew Murray certainly does not look out of sorts against him. I mean, from the baseline, there doesn't seem that much difference. 15 on. I would say the one department today has been the serves has been really the main difference, and just just those few errors coming in in, in, uh, in the wrong areas for Murray. But it doesn't frighten me looking at Johansson in comparison with Murray to go, well, he's got a long way to go before he gets to this level. 30, 15. 30 on. Sometimes you, when he has a target to aim at, it's almost like then he puts on that extra power. You, you sometimes wish you would do that a little bit more actually from the baseline in one of these rallies. Sometimes he guides it a little bit. 40. Good serving. Again, <laughs> I'm afraid to say. But, um, it's also been one of the differences. Just a lovely example of the racket, racket head control that Murray has. I mean, just almost daring him, daring him, just moving in, then just finessing that racket head cross court. Lovely touch. Game your time. First game, second.
the other the other thing to look for a little bit with Murray on the serve that and again I haven't seen him play that many times but it seems to me that in the forehand court the majority of his big serves the ones where he really goes for sort of his bread and butter is down the middle doesn't use the one out wide that much and that's a crucial serve on grass to bring your opponent out wide where you can then get the chance to hit in the open court we've seen Johansson use that very well in the backhand side he tends to flatten it out and go into the corner and doesn't use the one very much down the middle with the the spin taking the ball out wide again another crucial serve on grass which Johansson uses very well of course he'll go and serve this one out wide immediately there we go. <laughs> you're good. I, I, I know. <laughs> you're but it's not wide enough. No. It's not wide okay. enough. I take your point. You're still good. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. <laughs> not sure the reaction. <laughs> no. What's he doing there? <laughs> Bury me. Yes. <laughs> Just trying to think of the word there. Awful. What that was. That one wide had a bit of bit more juice and a little bit shorter up the court. If he can get to use that more often, that's a very effective serve on grass. Just to quantify that word juice, it's a, very much an Americanism, isn't it? It's not that uh, Murray is drinking apple or orange. <laughs> no. Go on then, inform our viewers. It's a little, juice. Bit, little bit more pace. A okay. little bit more pace. Okay, thank you. Change up from my first time he served in volley. One game. Nice technique on that volley. Nothing wrong with that. Certainly didn't learn it from Mark Pecci, that forehand volley. <laughs> That's the type of wide serve you're talking about. There's a difference being able to land it halfway up the service box for Johansson. Well, we've seen that over the years. I mean, Sampras of the obvious example. Federer can do that so well. You, there's, there's just no play on that. Oh. I just held that. So nicely, <laughs> Johansson. Going back cross court, opens up the angle. And a little f flip there, just lopped it over his head. Lovely racket head control. Good length. 13, 15. Greg Rosetsky 4-3 up in the second set against Radek Stepanek over on court number one. Lost the first set 6-3. 4-3. 
40-15. Still, though, not a bad option from Murray. OK, yes, disappointed with the outcome, as you can see, but thinking along the right lines. Three games on the board in the second set. No breaks. Johansson with a 2-1 lead. We've had another email in from Bill in uh, Essex. So are there any advantages to having a two-handed backhand? Jason Goodall has the answer for you, Bill. Well, I think there certainly is, especially when you're under extreme pressure. And Murray really was so good in that first set when he was asked very taxing questions under pressure. And... You can see he gets himself in a little bit of a pickle here because he's having to hit that shot with a closed stance and therefore he can't really rotate the upper half of his body as well as he would have wanted. So therefore he's got to really use his upper hand and you can oh. see that he's really under extreme pressure. So he uses his left hand in this situation to really drag the ball back across court and that's what really helps him get the ball across Johansson's body and turns defence into attack so effectively. So I think that's one of Murray's real strengths and it's definitely one of the advantages to having two hands over one. Thanks, uh, Jason. I'm sure you've made Bill and Essex absolutely delighted with that piece of analysis. If you do want to get in contact with the tennis team here at the Stellar Artois Championships, www.bbc.co forward slash tennis. Texas as well, 8 1 1 Murray this year has been playing all of his tennis on the Futures circuit, which is a level below the Challenger circuit, which is a level below the Tour. That's really where he is at the moment. This will be a decent lift in his ranking, though, over the next two or three weeks if he continues to play like this. Nottingham next week, then Wimbledon. It's a steep learning curve for him, though. All under the gaze of the British media. Yeah, Murray. Two games on. Not his best service hold for a while. So Murray on the future circuit, Johansson very much on the main tour, contesting the big titles. There's a semi-finalist indoors at Rotterdam this year, fourth round of the Australian Open. Fifteen. 
Yeah. Murray's had a lot of trouble on that serve down the middle. He hasn't really picked that very well. And Hansen's gone there a lot of times today. It might be worthwhile him changing his uh, service return position slightly. Oh, it's caught good. 30, 50. And Johansson stopped playing. <laughs> Can't believe it. Let's see what Hawkeye makes of it. Well, looks like it was the correct call. Johansson here just striding over and marking out his yardage as to where the ball bounced. Hawkeye, by the way, the latest uh, from there from them is they'll go undergo tests again after Wimbledon and if those tests are successful it'll be used at the Master Series in Cincinnati for the very first time to adjudicate calls. 40-15. And if that's a success then it will be moved on to the US Open. So still not a hundred percent that technology will come into play this year at the major events. I think rather inevitable that it, it will come in in the future though. Fourteen, thirty. So maybe something you might like to send an email in about. Do you think it's good that technology will come into play and will decide whether a ball was in or out, how it should be used? Game your answer. Johansson leads, three games to two. There'll be no more outbursts if that really came in. You can't it, really it argue take with the, the human machine. element out. I mean, what, what would you and I do after a match like this and there was a tight court and we, we, we'd go down to the media lounge, we'd you know, have a small glass of PIMS. What would we talk about? <laughs> exactly. We'd have to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good or bad in your opinion? Well, the, the problem is, I think where this really came into or well, the press was last year's US Open when the the Serena Williams Jennifer Capriati uh, I think it was the quarterfinals match where I mean there were four of the the worst calls there that have ever been seen I mean they weren't even they were like a foot out and I think after that that's when the the real sort of call for a change uh, you know I, but obviously I'm from a different perspective now when I was playing you know, I think you would you would like to know that there's a machine there that basically is almost uh, correct every time uh, and all that. But, but from the other point of view now, it's sort of fun to see sometimes some arguments here and there. I mean, that sort of adds a little bit of drama to it. It's not that easy to argue with the machine, although Ilya Nastasi used to argue with Cyclops in the old yeah. days. He'd go up to it and give it a belt. Yeah. We didn't think it was uh, giving him the right call. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel it's probably a, a good thing, but, but maybe the player should only be able to appeal to Hawkeye twice in a set and no more. And any other decisions after they've used up those appeals will go the way of the human eye. Imagine something like Germa Coria. I mean, there's a man that questions every single call. I mean, a set would last an hour and a half because he'd be going to Hawkeye every second. You may have heard a cheer actually coming up from the back of this court and on court one. Greg was asking five games all now. on the line at the last moment. Now, there was a well-disguised forehand there around the side of the ball, just dipped onto the line, but there was another point there where I felt Murray could have done a lot more with a couple of the ground strokes there, put himself in the offensive position in that rally.
That's right. He does volley well. 30, 50. We saw that this year in the Davis Cup doubles where he volleyed very well. Doesn't come into the net that often, though, in singles. Good technique. Good, Murray. Regan. Murray continuing to keep track of Johansson in this one. At the moment, every time he comes out after a break, he's uh, serving a game behind, which is different from the first set where he opened up. The longer this set goes, the more advantage you think possibly Johansson has. Lovely thing. Now Murray feels that may have just caught the side edge. Seen that Alan Carr certainly thinking that it didn't. No overall. Thirty eight fifteen. There's another example of a, a slice serve that just goes left, left, and then left again at the lights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a lot you can do about that. Only struck at 116 miles per hour. It's a perfect example that the pace is not everything, particularly on a grass court. Good defensive lob from Murray. Actually, there he sort of tried to block that one. He actually had a little bit more time than he thought there. He could have hit a little bit more spin on that forehand. Johansson, to me, looks uh, worryingly comfortable in the middle part of this uh, second set. He's uh, got the hold and a 4-3 lead. Fifteen.
Yeah. Believe it or not, we've had an email from China, from Wang Po. He says, hello team, I'm in China and it's 2 a.m. here, but I very much enjoy the coverage you represent. I can't wait until Hemman plays. Tim Hemman up next at the end of this one. You're going to be big in China now as well, John. <laughs> Not just in these shores. <laughs> That's <laughs> exhibition stuff. <laughs> I think that's what you call toying with your opponents. <laughs> <laughs> Murray with a clenched fist, but also a wry smile on his face. It's not every day Andy Murray gets to toy with the world number 20. Four games on. Drop shot lob, like a drill. Yeah. <laughs> now this is where you would hope now, four on the second, this is where you get that feeling that Murray, this is a chance for him to step up here, take a few chances, raise his game here. Oh. Oh. Well, Murray's saying to himself, why are you coming into the net? But I thought it was the right play. You said, take a chance. Well, he's, he's won two he's or three there. points when he's come into the net. Yeah. I don't think he's done too badly when he's come in. It was the right play. He just got unlucky on it. Didn't quite maybe do enough on the first volley. It's Mark Petchy there. He was uh, just looking after oh. Andy Murray during the grass court season. Into a tie break out on court number one. Greg Grzeski four points to two down against Radek Stepanek. and made this one a little bit too obvious.
time. Well, hopefully we won't have the uh, same result here as we just had out on court number one. Andy Murray a set down and serving to stay in the match, 4-5. It's a well-worked point there from Johansson. I think we can safely say, John, that the first question Greg Rosetsky will be asked in his press conference is, uh, were you disappointed not to be on centre court? <laughs> suggest that Andy Murray has done enough if not more to 15. back up the decision that was made to put him here on centre today has to be a, I suppose a changing of the guard at some time This is such a good shot. They're taking a chance two feet behind the baseline, going over the highest part of the net. Left. Murray again just asking for the same ball to be thrown back to him. So Murray handling that dangerous situation with a plomb. Once again, draws level with Johansson, edging ever closer to yet another tiebreak. Too conservative there with that passing shot. That was one where he really could have put an extra bit of power on here. Tried the angle just to dip it down, but he's playing against one of the quickest players on the tour. Sometimes need to blast those. Set up by the, the change of angle there with the four and the direction behind Johansson and really caught him unawares there. Easy forehand volley. That.
Oh, yes. That's what you were hoping for, John, just to get hold of the ball and have a bite. Great Beautiful. stuff. Beautiful forehand. Third on. Great backhand. In this game and another, and another big forehand now. Lovely racket preparation. Now can he feed off this slight surge of adrenaline? Probably the longest rally we're ever likely to see on grass <laughs> this year. And it ends up with Andrew Murray taking it. Thought for a moment we were back at Roland Garros. 30 14. 36 shots. Murray sucking up the air. <laughs> so is Johansson. The first break point of this second set. It's been that tight at the feet of Andy Murray. Hats off to him there. Yeah. He has served well for Johansson on big points. Very accurate today. Advantage, Johansson. Time and time again, it's just swung out wide. Like a good away swinger. Just keeps on going after the bounce. 13 aces in total. Johansson leads six games to five. Still looks to me, John, as if Johansson is, is comfortable out here after having taken the first set. Just looks to, okay, other than that break point he had to face, just feels to me exudes confidence out here at the moment. Well, he's very level, isn't he? You don't. It looks like he's uh, beating himself. He always plays at a consistent level, but to me, the experience there at, at a break point down and then the three first serves come in. I mean, that's just, you know, what, what the top players can do. They can pull those sort of things out when they need to. I, I wonder, I wonder on some of those big points in the, in the juice 
side where the Andrew Murray maybe should just change his service stance a little bit, maybe cut, try and cut the angle off. Okay, he's open to the one down the middle, but that's where he's being punished on that uh, juice side with that serve. I mean, it's just try. almost clockwork, isn't it, from uh, Thomas Johansson? So once again, uh, Andy Murray has to serve to stay in the match. No problem last time around. Johansson just making him wait, taking his time. Murray wants to get on with it. Tough right now not to be on the edge of your seat. It's a relatively small point, wasn't it? <laughs> he looked like he was gone on Murray when he had to move wide for that forehand, but recovered. Very good balance to get back into the middle of the court there. Rescue that point. That was a huge point. If you edge toward a tiebreak here, you just have to look up at Murray's first serve percentage, just 47%. He's allowing Johansson to get into his service games. Oh, that was a too predictable a shot there on that drop shot and he had a good chance there Murray to really be offensive with that position so he just took tried the drop shot it was the wrong shot at the wrong time Fighting. He really is digging his heels in at the grass court here. 40, exactly the type of spirit you want to see from a young British player. Tense moments for his camp. It's probably easier to be out there where he is than on the sidelines. New.
Like he got a bad bounce there. Looked like he checked a little bit. Yeah. Ball certainly does check when it hits any any part of a line. Can just sit up. Murray somewhere just needs to dig out a couple of first serves. That one will do nicely. One more please is the order of the day for Murray fans. Advantage tomorrow. Good morning. Thank you very much. Almost mailed to order. Murray screams his approval. And once more we go into a tie break. Second set tiebreak. First tiebreak was won comprehensively by Thomas Johansson, seven points to one. Make or break now for Andy Murray. Zero, Did look good. Murray's not sure. It was very close. No way sooner Alan Carr could intervene there. Murray looked over at, at Mark Petchy there, and Mark Petchy gave it that it was a good sight, that it was it was good. Yeah. Mark Petchy was right. Oh, once again, Johansson is the first player to get the early strike in a tie break. Yeah, it's time to really step up here and really go for it. Big chance one. missed by Johansson there. Half court to his forehand and really just opened up wildly on that, that shot. you wonder you're not sure exactly how the Queen's Club crowd will react to this young Scottish player I think uh, time will tell that they'll they'll take him into their hearts the way that he expresses himself 4-1 yours uh, you can hear him saying there why chip it, why am I chipping there instead of going for it Time's just a bit too conservative. Four two, Johansson. Opening set, Murray uh, crossed over five points to one down. He's in contact here. So just the one point against the serve. 
And always for the server, this uh, a difficult period, having served just one point at one end to cross over and serve one point at the top end. See when he took off for this ball, he knew he had to hit this hard to get past Johansson, who was still on the baseline. He drilled that forehand. Terms. Four. I'm sure some of you right now are feeling like you want to dive behind the settee and not look. Don't do it. Enjoy the torture. and serve. Five, four, Murray. And if Murray can hold the next two points on his serve, we'll be tied at one set apiece and it really will be game on. You want to see a third set, don't you, John? I certainly do. Well, sound enthused then. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You're nervous. Ever Andy Murray needed the first serve, it's right now. He's been able to produce them at times when he's really needed them. Ball striking from that position and considering the importance of that point. Six five, Murray. Wonderful composure. I think that says it all.
got it. <laughs> He's got it. One set of piece. Game on here on centre court. One hour and 52 minutes, and we'll go to a final set. And I can't wait, John Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was quite amazing in that in that tiebreaker. He actually played the the sort of the defense of the two. It was Johansson that was trying to force the play, but he made the errors. There was a couple of big forehands uh, from Murray on, on some crucial points, but generally speaking, he was the one that was just refusing to budge from the baseline and refusing to miss. And in the end, the more experienced player broke down. <sighs> okay, let's just calm down now <laughs> and uh, just get ready for this final set. Physically, as far as this man is concerned, no problem. Been there, done that. What about all the emotional, nervous energy that Murray has had to expend to get to this stage now at the start of the third? Has, well, he, has he got what it takes? Well, that, that's, that's the unknown because this is it's only an hour and what just over an hour and 50 minutes it's mm. not I mean it's a reasonably long match but he's played longer matches than this many times in juniors and futures yes but this but is it, not juniors exactly or well that's that's the unknown factor we don't know how much all this uh, press and all the sort of the the stuff that's been going on the last two days has affected that does tie you out and uh, I, there was a couple of times in the last few points that you could see he was puffing a little bit but you know there was a lot of emotion going out there I think I think he'll be fine I think you'll be fine. I think uh, it's going to be very interesting because Thomas Johansson, uh, there's no question, has been getting tight. And, and <laughs> you, know, you just don't expect that from someone of his experience against basically a junior. I mean, it's amazing. I can't tell by his face, though, Johansson. He's got that sort of almost like Borg like stare. It's like it's like he didn't, you wouldn't know if it was oh, yeah. five love up to him in the first set or he was down five love in the third. Look at that. You pick that. Is he nervous or is he not? Well, four men will be slightly delayed because this one's still on court. Next up will be Tim Hemmond against Chris. Guccione. Please move towards the times in the last few points that you could see he was puffing a little bit, but you know there was a lot of emotion going out there. I think I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine. I think uh, it's going to be very interesting because Thomas Johansson, uh, there's no question, has been getting tight, and, and <laughs> you, know, you just don't expect that from someone of his experience against basically a junior. I mean, it's amazing. I can't tell by his face, though, Johansson. He's got that sort of almost like Borg like stare. It's like it's like he didn't, you wouldn't know if it was oh, yeah. five love up to him in the first set or he was down five love in the third. Look at that. You pick that. Is he nervous or is he not? Well, four men will be slightly delayed because this one's still on court. Next up will be Tim Hemmond against Chris. Guccione. Please move towards the exits quickly, ladies and gentlemen. And then that Leighton Hewitt, three times a champion here. It's Max Meany of Belarus, so more to come here on the BBC and on BBC I. Final set. Murray to Murray open up the third and final set. The type of response if you were in Johansson's corner would be one of, well, come on, let's show us who's the world-class player out here. Let's show us who's the world number 20, early stages of a final set. Stamp your authority on it. 15 on.
But the way he plays, you can just see the rallies that he gets into where he just doesn't break down. This is the training he's had at Barcelona on the clay, for those hours and hours, just not missing. That. was a very close call. I thought it caught okay. some of the baseline. Set, ball change, please. In your caught long, though. And Murray with the perfect start to the final set. Early stages here as well for Murray. Just an, another question, just handling all the emotions. It must have been a massive rush of adrenaline at the end of the second. And now he's just got to settle down and say, OK, there's still a way to go. I'm, after all my hard work, I'm still only one set all. There were just a couple of points there where he was sort of looking like he was physically tired. And I think Mark Pecci, his coach, would be, would be saying to him, even if you are tired, bluff. Don't, don't give that away. I think it is something that, that uh, Petch and I'm sure Andy will work on as far as the, the looking ahead to the future is his physical conditioning. Sure about the report card of Johansson drop shot in this match, I would maybe give it perhaps a B minus or a C. It's been effective sometimes, but he's given away a lot of points because of it as well. It's all just in a fraction quiet and dead, haven't you, almost? <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> preparing for the sort of three all, yeah. four all, and the third. Yeah. I suppose it all can't be rock and roll, can it, right the way through? Oh! I suppose that's the beauty of the scoring system. It builds to a, a climax. hours up and still nothing really to choose between these two every advantage spot taken around the grounds
Gracias, Hasn't really done a lot of that today, Johansson, which is somewhat surprising. Taking on the second serve of Murray, either coming behind it or really just trying to take total control of a point. Third yard. First Yo. break goes the way of the Swede, Thomas Johansson. Two games to one. Andy Murray just hurls his racket down in frustration. I think he may have broken that as well. Yeah, I imagine a, a warning will be coming the way of uh, Andy Murray from sooner Alan Carr. Certainly one of the highlights uh, of this match so far has been the placement of Thomas Johansson, sir. But is it maybe getting a fraction too predictable? Here's Jason with Hawkeye. Well, thanks, Chris, and I certainly think so because he's really picking his spots. The slice serve out wide has been very, very effective at taking Murray out of the court, and the vast majority of his aces to the ad side have been up the tee, but I think the second serve really has been the predictable thing. 92% have gone to the backhand in the juice side and 100% on the ad side, so surely Murray now can start to take advantage of that when he's returning. The first serve, he's just behind the baseline, and he is moving up the court to take advantage of the fact that he wants to try and cut the ball off when Johansson uses the slice serve. But it's the second serve, really, that he can really get inside the baseline, take a good two or three feet up the court. And I think now, with momentum behind him, having won that second set, right. that he should really be taking that ball on because he knows where Johansson, or should know where Johansson is serving both the first and the second serves. Thanks, Jason. I wonder how much physical fatigue played a part in that service break for Johansson. Murray, to me, just looks uh, a little bit winded almost. Love, I think. I've had an email in from Chris in brackets, not revising in pool. Uh, if I fail my drama exam tomorrow, Andrew Murray is to blame. Fifteen. Do you think he maybe should be just standing a bit, a bit further wide on the juice side, Murray, and saying, OK, I'll give you the flat one down the middle? Well, that's what we were saying in the, in the second set. That serve has been going there the majority of times. He's, he's got to start trying to edge over or do something different. Occasionally throws in some strange errors, though, Johansson. Two sort of freebies in this game. Ah! 
Oh, and here's a chance. 30-14. Didn't think that Johansson could really miss that backhand volley. He was that close to the net, but miss he did. And what an opportunity for Murray to break straight back. And it's that drop shot that we saw too much of in Paris and the juniors, and it was something that I know that uh, Mark Petty was trying to eradicate really from Murray's game, that little drop. Well, it, there it put him under a lot of pressure having to make that pass shot. Of course, if, we, if it had made that, we would have said, you know, okay, it was brilliant and all that, but really the wrong shot at, the, at that time. Tough to get out of a habit, though, so quickly. And a habit it was in Paris. Advantage, Murray. Just the second ace from Johansson. A little bit gloomy overhead, but there's no rain in those clouds at all. Very strange match. Two games on. It's almost throwing out mixed signals to Murray. You'd think he's thinking, okay, I'm playing against a player of this level. Maybe I've got to do something special. And then he breaks back again without really doing much yeah. to win that game. Very similar to the first set. Exactly. Johansson got the first break and then handed the break back again. Neither man really has been able to grab this one by the horns and say, this is my match. I'm through to the quarterfinals to face either Hemman or Guccione. Well, your hands are almost going through a crisis in confidence at the moment. You can see him down the end of the court just shaking his head, not really accelerating through the ball. It's almost as if Murray is dictating the play somewhat by just keeping a decent leg, not really hitting a heavy ball. And he's just sucked Johansson into the way that he wants the match to be played. Game Murray. And Johansson just throwing that game away.
Tomorrow leads three games to two. Strange, isn't it, from Johansson? You thought break up, final set. Here's the man we talked about experience and. OK, he didn't really earn the break. It was rather handed to him by, by Andy Murray. But the last two games, you just look at Johansson and think, what on earth's going on? I mean, can you work this one out? I, I, no, because someone of his experience, when, when you're playing against someone who, you know, is, this is his first big tournament, when you get up a break against him in the third, I mean, the, the, the obvious thing is if you play one decent game and get a hold and get a two-game lead, there's a very good chance that an inexperienced opponent is going to go away. And he's just giving the momentum right back again to Andrew Murray without doing anything. It, it is, it's just an un, it's an un Thomas Johansson performance. Mm. It, it, it's really extraordinary. I can't, I don't understand what the reason is. is. Is he nervous because he's playing against a young player? I mean, why? He's done this before. The setting, there's no nerves right. down here. He's done this before. Extraordinary. And he's a very good grass court player with a lot of experience on this surface. I, I can't make it out. It's great for Andrew Murray because if he can raise his game, why can't yeah. he go on to... Maybe he doesn't even have to raise his game to win this match. Yeah, and physically, I mean, Murray looks like the one that, that is wilting a little bit. And you thought when Johansson got that break, then he may just have rolled his way through this final set, but certainly not the case. Back on serve. The Swede at 2-3. Please exit immediately or find a seat. <laughs> There we go. There we Exit go. immediately. Don't think they're going anywhere with those drinks. <laughs> we saw one of those spectacular shots against Taylor Dent yesterday where he was about that far off the court, Andrew Murray, and managed to direct it down the line for one of the best shots of the tournament. Quite timed that one right. It, it. Oh, now, we are going to stay here for the end of this Murray Johansson match. If you have tuned in for the weakest link, don't worry. It will follow at the end of the tennis. Game, Johansson. Three games on. It's almost strange atmosphere out here yeah. because yeah. the tennis is the worst it's been in the whole match in this set. And, you know, it's three on the third. We've got a British player here. It's very exciting. But th there's been no real spectacular winners to get the sort of crowd going. It's a, it's a very strange atmosphere. We're almost just waiting for it to go to a, another tiebreak, which is when all the drama will happen. Not sure I could handle another tiebreak, <laughs> to be honest, but... <laughs> If it is, it is. Love it. Well, Murray just clutching his left leg there. Now Murray just stretching out that left leg. I would uh, hazard a yes, he's starting to get a bit of cramp. Yeah, I agree. And we yeah. talked about this at the start of the third, the physical conditioning, all the, the emotional, the nerves, the nervous tension that he's never really experienced before. He can receive treatment for cramp. It wasn't like that a few years ago, but it is now.
Oh. Well, that is a grueling point. La 14. 28 shots in that rally. And another rally for Murray's body to absorb. Again, just uh, clutching that left thigh, Murray. Be amazed if the trainer's not called. Fifteen, fourteen. Hanson inside there would be absolutely steamed at itself for missing that second serve return. I think Johansson feels that one was wide no, down the line, good. but it was uh, all good to me. Let's see if uh, Walker confirms. Well, cool. I knew it was in, but <laughs> <laughs> good call, Chris. Yeah, good call. <laughs> Jeez, my eyesight's good. <laughs> so two break points faced by what looks like an exhausted Murray. One more to go. Yeah. yeah. Johansson berating himself. He's, he's thinking back now to that love 40. When he just gifted one of those break points right back to Murray. I've got to ask the question, why have you not seen more of that from Johansson? It'll be fascinating to listen to him in his press conference after this one. Fourth chance to get another break in this third set. Yeah. Not sure he can believe he's in this situation, Thomas Johansson. He's got all that to deal with in his mind right now. Plus, he's facing an 18-year-old who would give absolutely everything right now to win. Just to hold this service game. I can only think that Johansson is, is tight. <laughs> it's the only thing I can put it down to. Well, he certainly made sure he wasn't going to miss that volley. Yeah. Stared at that ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he'd have missed that volley, it was get the WD-40 out to lubricate his joints.
surely that was long on the baseline. Yeah. Well, people in the crowd saying it was a bad call. Sooner Alan Carr on the chair again, not getting involved. Let's have a look at this one, slow-mo replay. Well, that looked good. Definitely a little puff of titanium pigment. <laughs> I prefer chalk, believe me. <laughs> that was a slightly late call. <laughs> well, it was confirmed by about three people at once there. Linesman sort of called it, the crowd called it out, and then the umpire agreed as well. So everybody got behind that one. <laughs> How much more has Murray got to give? I mean, he, just, he just looks like he's <laughs> he looks like absolutely <laughs> out on his feet. But he still won't lay down. Left. Mum Judy said she couldn't get him out of bed this morning at 10.15 tomorrow. Who knows how late he's sleeping after this match. get the feeling Murray's match, Murray's hopes of going through to the last day, all hinge on this service game. On, Win or lose this game, if I was him, I'd just say, get the train around, sit down, give yourself a little bit of time to recover. what the crowd is going to make of this one as well. <laughs> Fifteen aces apiece now. Impressive volley from Johansson. He has missed a couple of shockers on the volley, Johansson. That one, he just pushed it down the middle, but got away with it.
think he needs every ounce of adrenaline energy that they can give him. Just edges ahead 4 3 in the final set, but as he slumps Marty. in his chair, how much is left? Every part of his body just must be crying out for oxygen, and he's only got a minute and 20 seconds to get refreshed. Oh, that's a big hold. some fight there you can see where he gets the fight from <laughs> can't you there's mother judy <laughs> she's gonna get cramped in a minute <laughs> unbelievable hold it, 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 but going back again and not taking any credit away from andy murray because that was an unbelievable gutsy hold there but what was your handsome thinking mm. i mean the love 40 the second serve uh, you know it, it is amazing that the experienced man and as you said he he must be just must be nervous. He must oh, be yeah. getting tight. I don't. You'd think he'd be in this position so many times that this would be almost like a piece of cake for him. Regulation match, but it isn't. It's affecting him. Please find your seats quickly. The question for Murray right here is, I mean, do, do you try and go for it right now and get the break and serve it out? Or do you think, OK, I've just got to focus in on my own service games? Almost let these games just fall by the wayside. It was close, but definitely missed. Again, Murray complaining about his socks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lesson to be learned for this match for Murray is clearly take out a, another pair of socks in your bag. Much more comfortable hold for Thomas Four Johansson. Games. Once more, we're tied at four games apiece in this final set. You have just come in off a hard day's work. Can you believe it? We're only in the second match of the day here. Greg Rosetsky has gone out. Straight sets to Radek Stepanek. Andy Roddick's gone through to the quarterfinals. Left. And this one, well, this one has been something else.
Just that extra bit of energy here from Murray, just pushing off. And then having that excellent racket head control there to finish off that forehand. That's the type of play you'd expect from a world number 20. Pretty much ideal conditions. 5.35 at night. Picked it. Just caught the top of the tape. Didn't bend the legs, Murray, on that half volley. I'm not surprised. I think if he did, he'd probably seize up. He's feeling the pace here, Murray. He's had a few leg cramps early stages of the third. But he really is hanging in. Forehand has been very patchy today from Johansson. That is his weaker side. He had, certainly had the opening there. Again, we become involved in another excruciating Murray service game. Once more to Juice. Last service game had four break points against him. Murray's cries of pain, I think, of anguish as well. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Second serve. to show more emotion. And round two tomorrow. Well, when people talk about Scottish grit, <laughs> uh, just take a look at this young man. He epitomizes those words.
he lined that yeah. one up. He hits that passing shot normally so well. That's just a, a physical thing there. He looked tired on that shot. He really had the court, knew what he was going to do, and just pulled it down. Get underneath the ball. That's a tired looking shot once more from Murray. And again, it's Johansson who really could stand on the verge of taking control of this one. Every time Murray complains about his socks, once more he pulls them up. He comes up with a big play. Keep complaining. And round to Murray. This is 16 and 17 for Andy Murray, and he's still in this one. He's edged ahead 5-4 in the final set. Murray leads, five game, come on. Now, if you have just uh, joined us uh, hoping to see the weakest link, I'm afraid to say you won't be able to see that now until Monday. We will stay here with this one, but at the end of this one, I'm afraid we'll have to leave you here at the Queen's Club, but you will be able to see Tim Hemmond against Chris Cuccioni on BBC I. Press that little red button and you'll be able to enjoy him and, and Guccione. But we will stay here for what remains of this enthralling encounter between Andy Murray and Thomas Johansson. Win or lose today, the man in your picture, the boy in your picture has produced Nine. a hugely credible performance. people on their feet sensing the importance of the next five or ten minutes Johansson serving to stay in the match One point down, three to go for Murray. just lunging to his right and clutching that left thigh once more pulling up his socks normally plays a good point after that well Murray's on it flat on his back and this uh, doesn't look too good 
looks to be in some sort of pain. In fact, a lot of pain. And please don't let this be at the end of this one. We don't want this to finish like this. Murray looks like he's in agony. In agony. Johansson is down with him. We think that it's just cramp. Johansson holding up Murray's leg, just stretching it. It's a fairly heavy fall. But if we go back to these pictures, it just looks like cramp. Let's hope it's all it is. What a moment for Murray to have this problem. Johansson serving to stay in the match at 4-5, 30 all now. Be an ankle injury there, could it? I think it's Did just cramp. 30 love point, he stretched out wide and he clutched the left thigh. I want to play the ball wide forehand and I, there's something on the grass and I heard something crack. Oh, well, that doesn't sound too good. Murray saying he heard something crack as he stretch to the ball so it's not cramped something is you thought John that's in the ankle yeah oh what a time for this to happen ladies oh. and gentlemen the HP trainer is currently evaluating the injury of Mr. Martin. Bill Norris on court a hugely experienced trainer if there was anybody you'd want on the court to try and analyze exactly what's happened it's Bill Norris. Saying, let's just wrap it, I think he said there. He'll strap his ankle. He'll uh, let the chair up by Sunan and Khan know exactly when he continues the treatment or starts the treatment, and then he'll be allowed three minutes. But again, what a moment for an injury timeout. Johansson serving to stay in the match at 4 5, 30 all on the Johansson serve. Not easy moments for Johansson, but pretty horrible moments right now for Andy Murray. And Johansson on his feet. He's not sitting down. He doesn't want to get uh, any tighter than he is, I think. And a worried look there, as you can imagine. What I mean, <laughs> amazing trauma in this match. Let's have another look at this. Murray desperately running across the baseline, trying to recover on a shot. That's where I think he felt something pop and just turned the ankle ever so slightly. As he was falling over. Now, it, it, the only thing is, is whether or not they're swelling. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Morrow now receive a medical time. So we'll have three minutes here for Bill Norris to fully strap the ankle, patch Andy Murray up, and get him back out on court. Thomas. Well, I wonder whether he even feels that he can continue. Okay. He's had a change in things. He's, he's beginning to cramp. Beginning to cramp. But what are you going to do? In his legs. Okay, good. So okay. Over now. Yeah, it's finished. Cancelled. Good. Okay, well, this is interesting because Andy's now said that he doesn't feel he needs the ankle strapped. He's starting to feel some cramp. So the medical timeout, I think you may have picked up, has been cancelled by Suna Alan Carr. Treatment, in theory, is complete, and Murray will try and come out and play without the ankle strap, but some ice cold spray on that left thigh that originally we thought was the problem.
creación. So Johansson serving here to stay in the match once more. 4-5, 30 all, final set. Got cramp again in the leg. Game your son. Five games all. Four change, please. New ball. You do wonder how on earth Andy Murray is continuing out here. Well, you would think this is going to affect him big time on the serve. Yep. See the cramp just th left thigh. Murray just standing at the back of the court, stretching it out as much as he can. Uh, just a little update there, Chris. I spoke to Bill Norris, the ATP Tour trainer, who was dealing with Andy Murray there. He says that he's not sure whether it's just a bruised heel or damage to the Achilles as well. He's watching what happens. He'll treat him again at the change of ends, but every time he tried to tape it, and you saw him trying to tape his ankle, he gets a cramp in the upper thigh. So hopefully it's not a full-on injury. Andy Castle there with uh, the update on the exact problem for Murray. Thanks, Andy. Oh, it's gone again. That left thigh has gone again. No further. And this uh, really is not a pretty sight. Bill Norris straight out onto court. Oh, boy, this is... Uh, this is a terrible situation. If you have just come in, we've had an extraordinary match here. 2 hours and 51 minutes on the board. Thomas Johansson took the first set 7-6. Andy Murray levelled in the second set by the same scoreline 7-6. And then Murray's physical conditioning at the end of the second set has just dropped considerably. But somehow he's managed to get to this stage 5-all in the final set. But it's now the right leg as well. The whole body just starting to cramp. Well, this is a situation where I dealt with this many times when I played with cramp. I had it once on a, on a match point, and, and in those days you couldn't get treated for it and lost the next Ladies six serves because my whole leg was locked. Mr. Murray is now receiving a medical timeout for cramping. A medical timeout announced by Sunit Alan Carr. That's three minutes again. It's in the old days you couldn't. This couldn't happen. You weren't allowed to have the trainers out for this because it was uh, 
it was called a physical injury and that's basically not being I suppose in good enough shape so if you got cramp in those days you were in big trouble because it was it's tough to get rid of it at any stage but if you don't have any treatment almost impossible and and, and also the you know the way Murray plays I mean he has to he wins his points from the back of the court he's got to run I mean, it's it's it, you would think now that even if he starts to play he's got almost no zero chance of winning this match Johansson's really only got to hit a few angles and it seems to set the cramp off again that rule was changed due, due to Shuzo Matsuoka do you remember him who got into a full body cramp and fully strapped the ankle patch Andy Murray up and get him back out on court Thomas. Well, I wonder whether he even feels that he can continue. Okay. He's had a change in things. He's, he's beginning to cramp. Beginning to cramp. But what are you going to do? In his legs. Okay, good. So okay. Over now. Yeah, it's finished. Cancel. Good. Okay. Okay, well this is interesting because Andy's now said that he doesn't feel he needs the ankle strapped. He's starting to feel some cramp. So the medical timeout, I think you may have picked up, has been cancelled by Sunit Alan Carr. Treatment, in theory, is complete. And Murray will try and come out and play without the ankle strap, but some ice-cold spray on that left thigh that originally we thought was the problem. So Johansson serving here to stay in the match once more 4-5 30 all final set Forty thirty. Cramp again in the leg. Game your on. Five games all. Fourteen, please. New ball. You do wonder how on earth Andy Murray is continuing out here. Well, you would think this is going to affect him big time on the serve. Yep. See the cramp just th left thigh. Murray just standing at the back of the court, stretching it out as much as he can. Uh, just a little update there, Chris. I spoke to Bill Norris, the ATP Tour trainer, who was dealing with Andy Murray there. He says that he's not sure whether it's just a bruised heel or damage to the Achilles as well. He's watching what happens. He'll treat him again at the change of ends, but every time he tried to tape it, and you saw him trying to tape his ankle, he gets a cramp in the upper thigh. So hopefully it's not a full-on injury. Andy Castle there with uh, the update on the exact problem for Murray. Thanks, Andy.
Oh, it's gone again. That left thigh is gone again. Love pressure. And this uh, really is not a pretty sight. Bill Norris straight out onto court. Oh boy, this is uh, this is a terrible situation. If you have just come in, we've had an extraordinary match here. Two hours and 51 minutes on the board. Thomas Johansson took the first set 7-6. Andy Murray levelled in the second set by the same scoreline 7-6. And then Murray's physical conditioning at the end of the second set has just dropped considerably. But somehow he's managed to get to this stage 5-all in the final set. But it's now the right leg as well. The whole body just starting to cramp. Well, this is a situation where I dealt with this many times when I played with cramp. I had it once on a, on a match point, and, and in those days you couldn't get treated for it and lost the next Ladies six serves because my whole leg was locked. So Murray is now receiving a medical timeout for cramping. A medical timeout announced by Suna Alan Carr. That's three minutes again. It's in the old days, you couldn't. This couldn't happen. You weren't allowed to have the trainers out for this because it was uh, it was called a physical injury, and that's basically not being, I suppose, in good enough shape. So if you got cramp in those days, you were in big trouble because it was it's tough to get rid of it at any stage. But if you don't have any treatment, almost impossible. And and, and also the you know the way Murray plays. I mean, he has to, he wins his points from the back of the court. He's got to run. I mean, it's it's it, you would think now that. Even if he starts to play, he's got almost no zero chance of winning this match. Johansson's really only got to hit a few angles, and it seems to set the cramp off again. That rule was changed due, due to Shuzo Matsuoka. Do you remember him who got into a full body cramp and, and nobody could come out on court and touch him because it wasn't allowed, as you said, and he just rolled around in agony until he just said, I can't continue. Well, so, Well, there have been players that, that have literally been taken to hospital with them. I remember Harold Solomon, Colin Dibley, that yeah. literally rolled up into a ball and and had to be almost prized open and they had to go to hospital it was the end of the end of the match and yeah you know, it can get dangerous i mean tonight after this match i'm sure that they'll put him on ivs and get fluid back into his system yeah and it's going to take him a few days to recover from something like this because uh, the fluid loss is uh, <laughs> he doesn't just recover in 24 hours no so either way um if by some sort of miracle he was to get through this match uh, or it doesn't look too good. Well, guys, I, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be, uh, it, you know, can cramp at this point is just fine. What we don't need is an actual injury. And what Bill Norris was extremely worried about when he was trying to tape that ankle was that the upper thigh was cramping. And because he couldn't bend the ankle at all to treat it, he didn't know whether it was Achilles damage or not from the previous fall. Now, Achilles damage is a whole different story as uh, John Lloyd and yourself, Chris, uh, would know. But as far as Wimbledon is concerned and uh, the immediate future, this grass court season, we just hope that it's not Achilles damage. Yeah, absolutely. If you weren't uh, with us when uh, Murray originally fell over and felt that he had damaged the ankle, he said he heard something crack, heard a pop as he was falling over. I agree with those words from uh, Andy that he doesn't want to jeopardise, I suppose, not just Wimbledon, but the future. I mean, this is somebody that we, we, we look to, to 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 really take on British tennis after the likes of Hemin and Rosetsky have gone off into the sunset. And let's hope that Murray may be able to continue. I'm sure some people thinking out there will maybe just say, OK, I've had enough. I've given it my best shot. And maybe I should just say, can't continue. I don't think that Andy Dream Murray will do that. He's got too much Time. stomach for the fight, too much grit. So a set all, five all, and Murray at love 30 no, on his serve. Doesn't. How much has he got left? <laughs> love 40.
Game Johansson. Johansson leads. Six games to five. Well, we didn't want this one to end the way it is ending, that's for sure. Yeah, doesn't want to sit down, obviously. Danger of him locking up again. Whichever way this one finishes, and it looks like it may end up in a loss for young Andy Murray, he's done enough, I think, to show everybody that really cares about the game involved in the game that... He's a name to look for in the future. And I'm sure he can take so much Time. out of this performance, but he will be desperately disappointed if it ends in a loss. I suppose in this situation, the only thing he can really do is just tee off on almost every shot, just yeah. try and get lucky to get into the tiebreaker. Johansson serving for the match. Well, that did look wide, but I don't think Murray's got the energy to complain. Three match points. That'll yeah. do. Set match. You're on the phone. Sorry, Jack Hansen makes his way through to the quarterfinals, but it was some display from Andy Murray, a standing ovation for both players, but you think the majority of people on their feet for. 18-year-old Andy Murray. I'm sure we'll see yet more of him over the years here at Queen's Club. He's definitely got a bright, bright future ahead of him. But it is Thomas Johansson who takes the spoils and goes through to the quarterfinals. John Lloyd. Well, it was a great performance from Andy Murray. Injuries, you know, who knows what would have happened. Had a great chance to win the match, but we've seen enough to realise now that we have a, a great, great potential in this man for the future. I just hope that that little pop that he heard in his ankle is nothing too serious. And uh, what I do now is just go straight back into the locker room and get some ice on it, trying to assess the problem. 